All right, everybody, Tin Man here. This is the start of my HHO project. Here we have one of our donor motors, just a six horsepower stationary motor. Um, to start with, we're going to be running this as per normal on fuel so we can get some measurements and flow rates from the system once it's set up. Then when we've got the required flow we need, we're going to switch it over to hydrogen. So I have three or four of these motors. Um, there's modifications that have to be made to them before you can run them on hydrogen. Uh, these ones here, in behind here, is our ignition coil. They have what they call a waste spark. Um, when you're running it on fuel because it's set at 4 degrees between 4 and 6 degrees before top dead centre the waste spark goes off when the exhaust valve is open which is not a problem when running fuel however because when you switch to hydrogen you have to retard the spark to about 2 to 5 degrees after top dead centre that waste spark will then go off when the inlet valve is open and that's exactly what we don't want. So to solve this problem there's a couple of ways we can do it. We can put a kill switch on the inlet valve which will kill the waste spark. Um, not such a reliable idea or we can machine a hole in the crank case, um, extend the camshaft and we can then put a plate on there with a set of points which will only fire once every two revolutions there because the cam is a two to one reduction from the crank and we can then also make that plate rotatable so we can adjust our timing so it's spot on. So that's what we'll be doing in this case, machining a hole in the crankcase, extending the camshaft, um, and that will take care of that problem. <coughs> the other thing with HHO is you don't need as much compression in the motor. Uh, the reason you have compression in a motor is because fuel is a very slow burning, uh, gasoline should I say is very slow burning you could say, whereas hydrogen is almost instant. Um, the compression increases the volatility of gasoline, uh, it gives it a quicker, bigger bang, whereas HHO we do not need to compress it to get that. So by reducing the compression um, we also increase the performance of the motor in the way that you don't lose so much trying to compress the air in such a small space so when we've got this ripped off um, and we're machining the hole in the crankcase for the cam extension and the timing we're also going to chuck the piston in the lathe which is over there and we're going to machine a couple of mil off of that as well um, that's pretty much well all we have to do for the mods on the motor to run on HHO. This motor will be remaining as a fuel one. I'll just grab one of my other ones and convert that to a HHO system. So it's just a matter of swapping the motors over once we get the system up and running. <coughs> um, of course, we're just going to chuck a pulley on our alternator and a pulley on our motor. This alternator is a brand new -y. 100 amp alternator. I've already ripped the voltage regulator off it and exposed the diodes. <coughs> We're going to be running, I was going to run a six cell um, setup, but I'm now going to put the seven cells in there just for that bit extra. We'll be running three cells off of one diode, four cells off the other diode, and the third diode or the third winding in the alternator will be used to charge our battery 
that will be running the spark and electronics on the motor. <coughs> so we've got our alternator, that's ready to go. We've got our motor sorted out. This is our cell. It's ready to be assembled. As you can see, I've cut these out to hold our tubes. Of course, our inner and our outer tubes all being sanded in a cross hatch pattern. Um, this helps the bubbles to fall off of the pipes instead of stick. <coughs> we have all our fittings, all high pressure fittings they are, and they're all stainless steel. We have our two different size high pressure hoses. Um, we have, of course, our flow meter. This will be telling us how much we're getting through the system. Also have our pressure gauge, which will be going on the system. Here we have the container that's going to hold our cell. Um, it will hold about 25 psi, which is much more than we need. Um, I see a lot of guys like pumping up the pressure on the HHO systems. I have no idea why. It's because you're simply relieving that pressure as soon as you're putting it into the carby. Um, the only thing you do by pressurising a unit is um, a bigger explosion if you should get a burn back in the system. So we will be only running about 5 kPa, 1 to 2 psi maybe, and that will be all that is required. This is our high pressure bubbler. Of course it's just a house water filter that we no longer use because we have a bigger one. So this is now going to be our bubbler. Um, and it's also going to have a flashback arrestor built into the system before it goes into the bubbler and then there will be another one on the other side after the bubbler before the motor <coughs> which I have hiding somewhere, just haven't found them yet so that's the start of um, my HHO project so like I said the first thing I'm going to do is knock up a frame to house the motor, the alternator and our bubbler and the container that holds our cell. <coughs> um, the next step after that's all up and running we'll be setting up the pulse system to pulse the alternator. The good thing about this is because we're going to be pulsing the centre coil of the alternator which creates our magnetic field um, every time that pulse collapses we get a back EMF which we will be charging a second battery. If I find that back EMF is enough to keep the battery charged and run the electronics on the motor I will then take the third cell or the third winding off the battery and put it to our cell. So that's just a um, heads up on what I plan to do here. Some of the guys were waiting to see what I was up to. Um, I've spent a lot of time on pulse motors and pulse systems, made a few improvements, made some very efficient systems. So now I'm going to give the HHO a go and see how well we can make that run. My pulse generator is actually my laptop computer. It has a pulse generator on it. I can adjust everything I need to, pulse width, pulse length, um, frequency, I can go from an AC wave to a square wave to a sawtooth wave um, and that was just downloaded straight off the internet so that became free. All I have to do is make up a amplifier to amplify the signal to pulse the alternator. Okay so I'll get to it make up the frame and we'll see you next video. Cheers from the Tin Man.